All right. So Cat Williams, man, I want to ask you, you brought him up a little bit earlier. What do you think about Cat Williams' most recent statements? And, you know, I don't want you to, you know, comment per se on Kevin Hart. You know, this isn't me trying to get you to hate on Kevin Hart. You know, this isn't a whole who do you think is better thing. The reason I'm asking you this is, like, do you believe there are, quote unquote, Illuminati puppets placed not only in the music industry, but all the other industries? I don't know, man. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not an Illuminati. Um, and I don't want to okay. be. Uh, so, but I don't know, man. I, I don't know that. I don't know their techniques. I don't know the 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 tactics when it comes to um, creating uh, you know industry plants. Um, I do know that Kevin Hart seems or gives the appearance to to have to have some you know someone who works hard. Um, I actually met Kevin Hart um a couple a couple years back. And I met him in um, Times Square, and he had told me he was making a, a, a production company, and he gave me his actual business card for the company, right? And I didn't even know. I regret this to this day. I'm like, damn, I didn't even. I should have called. I should have called Kevin, man. But he wasn't as big as he was now then, right? So I, I don't know what the fuck. I was spaced out. I I dropped the ball on that one. But I got a chance to meet him. He, he seemed very personable, very very energetic, very like very very intentional like very like um, almost if you don't if you don't know how to properly read his energy he can almost come across as like intense but i think i think he just seemed super focused he had a game plan he stuck to it and, and, and he became successful i definitely think cat williams is um tremendously um more more funnier than, than kevin i think cat williams is just a, a better comedian if there's like a grading system you know Cat Williams would be a little more um, uh, advanced, you know, than, than 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 good old Kev. But I mean, they both work hard and, and they've accomplished what few people could only hope to or dream to accomplish. Well, I would say that Cat Williams had more of a you know straight line to the top of the industry than Kevin Hart did. Kevin Hart had to kind of work his way through with some movies that were considered corny at the beginning of his career, whereas uh, Cat Williams kind of, uh, you know, he, he was put in some franchises, you know? But yeah, but if you but if you look at, like, unbiasedly, if you look at, like, a Cat Williams special and Kevin Hart special, to me, I, I just see Cat. Kevin Hart has just transitioned to making blockbuster films. Yeah. And, 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 and film comedy versus being on stage comedy is two different things. So I want you to tell me about the No Labels Tour, man. What is the No Labels Tour? And let everybody know why they should care about it. Oh, man. I mean, so, um, you know, website is uh, nolabelstour.com. N-O-L-A-B-E-L-S-T-O-U-R.com. Nolabelstour.com. Um, and I think what I've done groundbreaking with this tour is I've created a recipe for success and a blueprint and a roadmap for success, which content creators, artists, and people in media can follow um, without having a machine or the backing of a large uh, uh, corporate uh, company or corporation behind them. And the No Labels Tour, I'm teaching people how to reprogram their subconscious mind. Like, I say all the time, how you think creates how you feel. How you feel becomes an emotion. That emotion becomes a vibration. That vibration becomes a magnet that attracts things to you. Mm -hmm. um, and it is so hard now because we're dealing with a lot of oversaturation. It's hard to find real true information on how to be successful, how to monetize, how to make money off what you of what you're doing. Like, like what I was telling you earlier, right? Like value, like adding adding value how, how do you find a way to add value to your audience right um so the tour is about providing the information that people want to come up need in order to be successful that's why you should tune into the tour because i'm giving real real strategies like for instance most rappers or most artists they don't realize that music is not a product it's just the catalyst um you know for um, a, a product or service. Music is the commercial for the products you sell or the services you provide. McDonald's has music. 
I'm loving it. Bop, bop, bop. They have product, though. Burgers and fries. McDonald's provides a service com through commercial real estate because they are franchised. They give you an opportunity to be a franchisee. Um, so when you make music, you got to think about what product can I attach to this song I'm about to create or put out? And then the business of it is you selling that product, selling that service to the person that's listening to that song, through that song that they're listening to. So that's why motherfuckers should care about um, the No Label Store because we're showing you how to make it without compromise, without selling your soul, without laughing at people's jokes who are not funny, without somebody playing with your booty, without someone degrading you or telling you you ain't shit, and, or someone that you have no creative control. So, yeah. No, no, no shit. The, this tour is, is, is very helpful to artists and content creators, and I'm just excited about it. You know, I wanted to ask you, man, have you ever had a meeting at a label? And if so, what are some of your most memorable moments from meetings, whether they're bad or good? Um, <laughs> man, just the energy, that, like just the indirect energy that they project or try to project on you not to say a motherfucking word, not to ask no questions. That's like the energy, right? Like, don't don't ask no don't ask no questions. You know, don't ask no questions. You know, don't ask no questions. Just just sit there and, and, and sign your fucking life away. Um, that's what I can remember. Just people, a lot of nonverbal communication. You know, a lot of nonverbal communication and a lot of tension in the air when you might want to know something that you don't know. So, yeah. That's what I can uh, recollect from 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 that uh, experience. What did you think about the independent surge with labels like Koch, now renamed E One, and even Empire taking over? Um, I mean, fuck them all. To be honest with you, right? Like, I'm I'm competitive. These you know these guys are my competitors, so um, I'm I'm more fo I'm more focused on growing my knowledge base, doing my due diligence and my understanding. So I've found that a lot of record labels get their money from banks. Um, and at the end of the day, why would I put myself in the least profitable financial position when I can have the maximum financial uh, position with creative control if I do it on my own? So when I see all these companies but I see all these companies popping up, right? It it, it 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 creates a fire inside of me. It creates a fire, man. Um, I want to compete. I don't look at Gazi. Um, this is the guy that you know uh, supposedly owns Empire. I don't look at him like he's doing something that I can't do or, or he's phenomenal. Man, fuck them all, man. Like I, I want to compete. I want to make it cool for artists to own and control their art without getting fucking robbed. I mean, this is a billion dollar industry. Being a billionaire should be as, as easy as crossing the street from green to red. You know what I mean? Right? Um, YouTube made a hundred over a hundred billion dollars in, in, in ad revenue. But if it wasn't for the content creators creating content that creates a space where advertisers can advertise and pay for that advertisement, they wouldn't have made that fucking money. So I don't look at Larry Page and Sergey Brin like they're gods. I look at them as they're just extremely overpaid middlemen. And it's time for content creators to get a piece of the pie. Because people shouldn't be making this. It's hard work. You notice you make content. You consistent at it. It's hard work. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta feed the beast. That shit's like a fucking, fucking uh, 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 cup that got a hole in the bottom. And they tell you pour water there, and it, your water's your content. They tell you pour water in that fucking cup. That shit spill out the fucking bottom. So you like you gotta you gotta you gotta learn how to like pour the water in the, pour the water in the cup. You gotta pour the water this way. Pause. You gotta pour the water in the cup backwards, and, and ch to try to drink it. You can't pour that shit in that cup. And let it sit there and then think you're gonna pick it up two hours later. Because it's gonna be depleted. 
you got to keep, keep, keep making content. Keep, keep, keep making content. So if I'm working like this, I don't know no field where outside of content creation, where you can work this hard, work it consistent, and get the minimum fucking payout. It's not right. So when I see these these companies emerging, fuck them all, man. I, I want to know what they know, figure out their infrastructure, figure out who their uh, IPA is, which is intellectual property attorney, figure out how they're making their fucking money and duplicate and clone that shit to the best of my ability so I can make at least a fraction of what they're making. And I'm cool with that. You know, 50 Cent called Koch the graveyard label, you know, when he was dissing Cameron. Do you feel the independent labels are the graveyards for artists like 50 said? I mean, in this business, you you pay for what you don't know and you can only uh, gain what you negotiate for. So there's no such thing as a place being a graveyard. You're dead if you don't have knowledge on the business that you're conducting in. Anything can be a graveyard if you don't have the proper knowledge base to keep your, your career alive or or out of the red. What were your thoughts on Jim Jones using the label like Koch to his benefit when the world was buzzing about Joel Santana signing with Def Jam? I mean, Jim is a hustler, you know? Jim is a hustler. He wasn't blessed with um, lyrical prowess. So he had to, you know, he had to work hard. You know, Jim Jones is like uh, 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 the rap version of Patrick Beverly. You know, you know, you know Patrick Beverly. Patrick Beverly plays in the NBA. Great, great defender. He ain't no LeBron James. He ain't no Michael Jordan. But that motherfucker gonna play some fucking. He's gonna pick up on that defense. So, I think I think Jim Jones doing that was genius because he he understood he accepted the fact where he had chinks in his armor in terms of just like lyrical capability or talent. Um, and he and he really focused on his hustle and being a hustler. And look at look how look how life turns around because now he actually raps way better than he did when he first came out. Can't deny that. Did you ever get an opportunity to connect with Jim Jones that you could share? Um, no. One time he had a, Jim Jones had a studio right on the corner of Twenty Eighth and Broadway. He had a studio, and um, I met his cousin, or the guy that you know works the studio who says he's his cousin, and that was, I mean, that was it. That was my only. Oh, that was the only. Oh, sorry. That was my only interaction with um with with, with Jim Jones when he had the studio downtown on um on Broadway. I had I had met him um I met him one time. What do you think about Jim Jones wearing a purple sweater at a fashion show and the internet going crazy accusing him of being the I word? You know the one, the one that starts with an I, ends with an I. <laughs> nah, starts with an I. Ends with an I, rhymes with Cluminati. Oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, hey man, what, 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 um, um, what can I say? What, what makes Jim Jones, what, what, what Jim Jones drink doesn't make me pee. And I think I'm more focused on the parallel path that I'm taking. And I think that a lot of times people get caught up in these guys' lifestyle, whether good or bad, is still these guys' lifestyle. So what Jim Jones is doing is maybe I don't and I don't know what he's doing. And I can't put um a definition or title associate my opinion on what he's doing. I don't fucking know. Right? I don't know. And I, and I, I can't say I really care. Um, but I think Jim Jones is, 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 a, is a phenomenal hustler and he knows how to adapt. One thing Jim Jones has shown the world during the duration of, of his career is that he knows how to fucking adapt and find his way. He's a fucking hustler, man. So shout out to Jim for being a fucking hustler, being consistent because it's, it's not fucking easy. 
even though he makes it look easy. In terms of this this uh, uh, I word shit, I, I hope he's not involved in no fuckery. Um, but if he is, it's not gonna affect what the fuck I got going on. Either way. Yeah, man. I mean, Cameron had the pink Escalade, the pink fur. <laughs> so personally, I don't know why the whole internet erupted like that. Time right. changed, I guess. Yeah, people. You know. Yeah, I, yeah. I think people. You look for that. I don't know what you call. It, they look for that so-called excitement. You know, they're looking. They're looking for. You know, they're looking for that. They're looking for that gossip, that tea, whatever it is. Right. They're always, you know, searching for it. And they and they typically find it because they always searching for it. Um, I don't fucking know. Um, but you know, Jim, Jim is a hustler. And one thing, whether you hate him, like him, or love him, cannot take away the fact that that man worked extremely hard to get in the position that he's in today. Jim Jones had two major artists, Max B and Stack Bundles. What yep. do you think? about all the people that say Jim Jones could have got stacked bundles out of Far Rock? I can't get my fat ass brother out of checkers. So, again, this is what I'm saying. Like, a lot of times people give opinions on shit that they never experienced. Getting someone else to change their own habits, you know how hard that is? You know how hard it is to get another man, grown ass man, to change what he's viewing as right for you to get him to change that that's fucking hard as fucking calculus on the moon with a 20 minute air tank and one pencil it's fucking tough Mikey Right? Like, it's fucking tough. I got to eight bucks. I can't get my fucking brother to get out of the fucking checkers. It is so... I cannot get my brother to do anything without some type of an argument or pushback. This is my fucking brother. Do you know how hard it is to get a stranger to, to maneuver or do things or live a lifestyle you think they should be living because they you believe the lifestyle that they're living is going to put them in jeopardy? It's like... Shit's hard. So I never bought into that bullshit. People talking about, yo, he, he could have did this for Stack. If Stack, Stack was a grown ass man. If Stack didn't want to do what Jim was proposing, and not saying Jim even proposed anything, but if he did, the last final say so is, is in Stack's hands. What do you say to the people that say it was Stack Bundle's fault and not Jim Jones because Stack Bundles didn't want to leave Far Rock? Mm. It goes back to what I said earlier. You can't. You can't, like, look, if you see somebody, you go to the gym, right? And you, you go to the gym and you work out for two hours and your body is looking amazing. And you get out, you go to the juice bar up the street to get some juice. And you see this fucking fat 685-pound lard-ass fucking whale with, with legs and kneecaps in the snack section eating honey fucking buns. You're not going to just get that person to stop doing that. It's a habit. Shit be habits, man. Habits are hard to fucking break. I still struggle with some habits. So imagine trying to get someone to leave a neighborhood they grew up in their whole fucking life. He just couldn't see it. And unfortunately, it cost him his life.